So the M3 MacBook Air has been out for a while and I want to talk about it mainly because I've used both the M2 MacBook Air as well as the M4 iPad Pro on the day-to-day -day extensively. With that, sure, while the M3 Air hasn't really changed much in terms of how it looks compared to the M2 MacBook Air, it's still seeing a good performance increase over the M2 Air. With that, I've seen quite a few videos online talking about the M3 Air and how it's partially just a marginal increase over the M2 Air. And yeah, while I can't deny the M2 Air still exists, and of course it's going to be a little bit cheaper, I still wanted to give the M3 MacBook Air its own deserved review, if that makes sense. So yeah, with this portable beast of a laptop, what makes this so special to me? Honestly, it's just simply how portable and powerful this MacBook is with only just a few compromises. For myself, I have some sort of weird infatuation with all the smaller tech Apple releases. They have the Pro lineup and the Mac Studios and all that jazz, but for myself, for some reason, I'm just so drawn to this tiny laptop. Um, and that's not just the, the Mac lineup either, that goes into their iPads. My favorite iPad is still the iPad mini 6. And my daily phone, despite having the iPhone 15 Pro, my daily driver still remains the 13 mini just because it's tiny. In reality too, for this video at least, if you're looking for an in-depth spec analysis or benchmarks and all that, you're not gonna find that here, but rather just the everyday user experience and review. Now in my world specifically, I'm about three months into having my second kid, which has been a rather heavy shift from having one semi self-sustaining toddler. With that, I'm finding it harder and harder to make any sort of headway on my creative or productive tasks. Hence why I've been leaning heavier into the M4 iPad Pro as well as the M3 MacBook Air. Sometimes all you need is a task to get done, some good music and some tiny portable tech. Now, of course, there are other options when it comes down to portability and power, namely the iPad Pro that I've been using more recently as well as the MacBook Pro lineup. So with those other options in mind, the question is whether or not the M3 MacBook Air is enough. And just so I'm being honest with myself, again, I'm totally biased when it comes down to these smaller tech items. So I do wanna see if it can get through my entire workflow end to end. And for reference on what end to end even looks like, primarily my Mac is my powerhouse for all content creation, everyday media and browsing, and even some light gaming. As a tired ass dad with like 25 minutes available per day to game, sometimes powerful portability is really what makes the difference. Now, will this M3 MacBook Air cover me for all of that? Maybe, probably, I'm not too sure. Um, either way, so far it's been incredible. And with this one here specifically, when it comes down to specs, I'm gonna keep this brief, because again, I don't wanna go too far in depth about that. Um, but this one specifically has uh, the eight core CPU, 10 core GPU with two terabytes of storage and 24 gigs of RAM. In terms of the finish, I did end up going with Midnight Blue, mainly because I just really dig how it looks. And depending on the lighting, sometimes it looks black or sometimes super blue. Either way, I really dig it. Now maxing out an M3 MacBook Air, is that the best use of money? No, probably not. If I'm being completely honest, you're probably gonna wanna choose the MacBook Pro lineup. For myself specifically, again, I did want the MacBook Air being as portable as it is. And with that, I do need the most power I can possibly get in a small package. The biggest consideration for me when it comes down to my portable power is if it can handle my creative workflow, which can deal with some pretty beefy files. So yeah, that's why I got this thing maxed out. Even still, so far at least, this MacBook has shattered my expectations for what a thin and light laptop is capable of. Still, shooting 4K 24 FPS footage can sometimes take up quite a bit of space, which is why I needed the two terabytes. And again, it's just shredding through all of that footage when I'm editing. From a creation standpoint, yes, this is maxed out, but I haven't really seen much of compromise going with the MacBook Air lineup. Again, it's hard to think why I'd really wanna go bigger than this. And not really that it's specifically limited to the MacBook Air lineup, but the keyboards on MacBooks are simply a pleasure to use. Not to mention the trackpad on any MacBook whatsoever is simply unmatched. And while I'm sure it was possible before the M series lineup of chips, it's wild to think that this beautiful sheet of metal and glass, this tiny MacBook, runs my entire YouTube channel and that's mind blowing to me. Once upon a time, there was some sort of huge sacrifice when it comes down to getting a laptop over a big ass desktop PC, but not so much anymore. And no, this isn't really perfect. Is this for everybody? Absolutely not. But the fact that I can start a project at my desk, undock it to work while I'm just chilling with my kids, then go out and about with this laptop and all the way back to my desk setup at the end of the day and still have battery left over is simply nuts. And while this laptop might not replace a desktop for everybody, it's never been closer. Now let me pretend I'm not me and I'm not Mac specking out a MacBook Air. This is still a dope everyday laptop. For me, sometimes it's just doing my assignments while I work on my accounting designation in the evenings, throwing up some YouTube or just grinding through some of that homework. And I won't pretend like there aren't some drawbacks with this because there are a few mainly because it is again a MacBook Air and that's gonna be the port selection. In my case specifically, I really am missing that SD card slot and the HDMI port you'd find on the Pro lineup. For myself, I mostly use my MacBook and my desk setup as well with some sort of Thunderbolt dock. Right now, I'm using this 16-in-1 dock from channel sponsor Mini Sopru, which in my setup gives me back that SD and micro SD card slot I'm missing, alongside that HDMI port I need to hook up my monitor and accessories. And fun fact, if you are using
using an M1, or M2, or even an M3, depending on your configuration, you can't have more than one external display, which is sort of wacky even by Apple standards. So when I really do need it, I can still add that additional monitor to my setup, despite the MacBook Air's limitations. But when it comes to this dock on the front and back, at least, this will give me a massive amount of additional ports, like three Type-C ports, alongside another three count of USB-A's. There is a healthy mix of USB 3.0 and 2.0, which I will leave a pop-up here if you do want to see what that is specifically. In any case, this dock is great for using my external storage wherever needed, alongside more peripheral connections like my mouse, keyboard, light bar, and webcam. It does fit perfectly into my desk setup, giving me that one cable connection for my MacBook at 85 watts power delivery. I will have this dock linked down below in the video description, and thanks to Mini Sopru for sponsoring this portion of today's video. Okay, now I've spoken a lot about the portability of the MacBook and how impressive that is, but another one of its strengths is the fact that it can empower an entire desk setup like this one behind me, which by itself is still pretty sweet. For myself, at least as a creator, I'm really lucky to have more than one desk set up. I do have one here down in my basement where I really do get into work and gaming, and another for the times where I am more tied up with the kids and I wanna get a jab at console gaming or some additional work. In this case, with my desk set up upstairs with the LG monitor, there's no other way for me to connect that monitor to my MacBook Air apart from using some sort of dock. If you are talking about an easy desk workstation laptop hybrid, the MacBook Air Steel Easy covers this for just about anything you need. And again, it's just one of those laptops that's legitimately nice to have and take with you wherever you go. One thing for sure is that when it comes down to these MacBooks, it's not all about productivity and creation work and all that stuff because it still does a great job at media consumption and even some light gaming. Now, as a gamer myself, realistically, you're not buying a MacBook specifically for gaming. That said, it does a pretty good job, even with titles like Baldur's Gate 3. I can't say every game's available on Mac just yet, but you are still gonna be getting some good frames on the games that are available, and it's still nice to have. Outside of gaming though, the screen on here looks great, and it does get decently bright outside. Not that that's really an issue for me specifically, and well, inside everything holds up even better. For me, it's just nice with this screen to be able to actually consume some content on the couch or even get some more work done whenever I have the chance. As a dad, it really is hard to sneak moments in for a show or a movie, but right now I'm slowly getting through Godzilla Minus One, which has been incredible so far. It's also easy to forget that this all-in-one package on this MacBook Air still has a decent enough set of microphone, speakers, and a webcam built right in. Is it the best ever? No. Are you going to be expecting studio quality? Definitely not but it's there and it does a damn good job. What does it for me more so than anything are the speakers on there. I'm not quite sure how they made them sound as good as they are. Not that a YouTube video will really do it much justice, but here is a quick sound test. But outside of that, for the times you do need to take some voice notes or throw down a riff on guitar or something, this is beyond adequate and it does a great job. Again, the camera is a camera. It's there, I can't really say it's that good, honestly, but from a literal physics standpoint, I don't really know how they could have fit a better or larger camera in the screen itself. But yeah, as an all-in-one package, I do still find it incredibly impressive considering the size. Apart from that, at least, when it comes down to the battery life on the M3 MacBook Air, it's hard for me to really go in depth on this. You can't really do a battery test for me specifically. I know Apple says like 18, 19, 20 hours or something like that, but in reality, whatever I do on it's gonna be different from you. And likewise, I'm usually gonna be docked at a desk setup one way or another throughout the day, so for me to test that, it's not particularly realistic. Still, for the days I am out and about and I am having a bit of a longer day, I'm still ending the day with over 30% battery, but that's just my use case. Now, being completely honest, for laptop, Macs are historically expensive, but as an all-in-one package, it's hard not to see the value here. With that, like I mentioned before, you're probably not gonna need to spec this out to the max like I did, especially if you're just a student or some sort of professional, you definitely don't need to max this thing out. What really does hurt this thing is when you do get into larger files and content creation, where a fatter storage and more RAM really does go a long way. Now, with everything I've talked about, to answer the original question, is this MacBook Air enough? Typically, I'd probably hit you with a depends on who you are, but honestly, I'm gonna give a straight out yes this time around. As somebody who runs my entire YouTube channel off of MacBook Air as my primary machine, and even having done it over a month with an iPad, this MacBook has easily managed every single thing I've thrown at it, including my heavy intensive workflows. If you disagree with whether or not it's enough, chances are you already know the MacBook Air isn't gonna be for you, and that's definitely okay. Still, I personally have some sort of weird infatuation with the tiny tech like I mentioned, the iPad mini 6, iPhone mini 13, and the MacBook Air is just simply so incredible that it's hard for me not to get impressed. And I haven't really even touched on all the other things like using this MacBook with a projector to have dance parties or catching FaceTime with the grandparents on the go, or again, just having 10 minutes alone to be a better me if that makes sense. And as corny as it sounds, all of those things really do matter to me and the M3 MacBook Air really does get it done. If you're a creative, a professional, a family person, whatever it might be, or somewhere in between, I'd say this is a pretty easy recommendation to just about anybody. But maybe I'm just blowing smoke. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. I'd love to have a conversation about it. 
I do appreciate you guys watching till the end. Till next time.